Hello everybody, welcome to Cape Rugby TV. It's Wednesday night and we talk about what's happening in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. It's a lot of action tonight. We'll take a look at the highlights between Hamilton and Brackenfell. Belha, we're up, we're up against UWC over the weekend and we'll take a look at our featured game, Hands and Hearts, up against uh, Helderberg. Um, with me on the show this evening, Jerome Parvata. Jerome, welcome back. Yeah, JP, good to be back. Um, we had some nice rain uh, on Saturday also. Um, Teams were playing in the rain, but it was still good. Always good. Rugby's winter weather. And uh, Faisal Felton, nice to have you back, Faisal. Uh, it's good to be here tonight, JP. All right. As always. So, folks, um, of course, big thank you to our sponsors that are on board with us. MCHEM 24-Hour Pharmacy. You'll find them on the corner of uh, N1 and the Durban Road. Uh, Springbok Atlas for your bus transport services. Springbok Atlas on board with Cape Rugby TV. If you need to book any buses, then Springbok Atlas is uh, the bus company for you. Of course, Score Energy Drinks, uh, as you know, you can see them in the background here behind me. Sport, score on board with Western Province Club Rugby for the Sevens Tournament. And uh, then, of course, um, Hisense, our technical partner, and Dulux Maitland at number 30 Kuburg Road uh, for all of your uh, paint supplies. So those are our suppliers and partners to Cape Rugby that managed to keep the ball rolling, so to speak, here on Cape Rugby TV. Um, right, folks, we've got a lot of highlights coming up this evening. Um, we're also going to be talking about the top nine, now that the top nine has been established. And it's one of the reasons that Faisal has joined us this evening. So talk a little bit about the top nine. It's, of course, the divisions, uh, the top three in the various divisions, the city, the southern and the northern league divisions. We now know who the top three are from each division that are going to go into the top nine competition. And Faisal is going to tell us a little bit more about that um, during the course of the show. And we'll have a chat with him about the um, uh, promotion relegation process as well as the, the top six that go through into the knockout phases of Super League A, B and C's. We'll take a look also at uh, the technical review, which uh, Jerome has got for us. We'll take a look at the line-out movement in the match between UWC and Belhar. But let's take a look first now at uh, the highlights uh, from the um, match between Hamilton and Brackenfell. back everybody a uh, big game there between Hamilton's and Brackenfell a win for Hamilton's 41 points to 15 let's quickly take a look at the results in a uh, Super League game so it was a uh, win for UWC 34 points to 7 as you see there Hamilton's 41 15 over Brackenfell St George's uh, going down to False Bay 35 15 Tigerberg with a draw against SK UCT going down to Durbel Union Mill 37 26 over Vicks and Stellenbosch 56 over uh, Villagers um, Jerome, just uh, talking about the uh, match there between Hamilton's and Brackenfell. 41-15 um, win for, for Brackenfell. Hamilton's uh, will be happy with staying in the top six. Yeah, Hamilton's uh, started off slow, but uh, it's a good result for them. Uh, is Brackenfell is also not a bad team, and I know they both got two big packs of forwards. So that's a, that's a real good result for, for Hamilton's. 
Um, Faisal, are the guys starting to get to the feeling of uh, in that six, seven, and eight spot, maybe nine? We'll take a look at the log in a second, but are they starting to, to feel the pinch now? No, I think, JP, if you look at the logs, it's very tight. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm even not only at the top, but also at the bottom. I mean, anyone that says club rugby in Cape Town is not exciting, I think, doesn't know what they're speaking about it's, in that days. It's definitely down to the wire this year. Um, but let's now uh, take quickly before uh, let's take a look now at the logs in, um, in in Super League A, folks. Just to give you an idea of how close it is and what Fazil is referring to, it's it's extremely tight at the top and the bottom. You see, the Stellenbosch is sitting at the top at the moment. They've managed to play catch up, but they're already sitting there with a massive um, points difference, 56 points. And their closest rival being False Bay on 48, followed then by Durbel, Hamilton's Union Mall, UCT, Vix, and Brackenfell. Now, if you look at Brackenfell, they're sitting at number eight on the log at the moment followed by Tigerberg and SK Warmers. But Faisal, going to your point there in terms of, of the log, um, it's obviously, if you look at those two teams, Brackenfell is one of those teams that is on the edge and needs a few more games to be able to pull it off, no, to look, get in the top six. Yeah, no, definitely. If you look at it, they're lying eighth, but a win will basically push them up into fifth, sixth position. Yeah. So anything is possible. Every, every game is vital. You know, in the past, it was a matter of it was a runaway one and two, whereas now at the moment, no, team number eight has a chance. Team number nine has an outside chance in yeah. that day. So it's really down to the wire in terms of, you know, who's going to make the top six. So we obviously can't look at every team and we have taken a, a, different, a couple of different teams. We're going to take it, uh, a look at Brackenfell's team season in a second. Um, but we are, we're taking one team at a time. And you, of course, um, have seen the highlights there between Hamilton's and Brackenfell. But let's take a look at Brackenfell's team season then. Their, their game coming up this weekend is away against Union Mall. So this is going to play in their favor. Now you can see now that their next game this coming weekend is against Union Mill, and then they've got two home games, UWC and False Bay. Right, Jerome, if we, we take a look at that team season for Brackenfell, they've got three more games left in the cards. If they're going to put any points on the board, as Faisal was saying, they need to do it now. Home, they're away against UWC, and then it's uh, to Union Mill this weekend. Then it's home against UWC and home against False Bay. They need to get these points now. Yeah, I think I think uh, the coach also figured out every point is important now. So so I think uh, what they will do now, if they get points, they will take the points, and uh, because it's always good to because uh, earlier on guys will kick out and try to score, but now the three points is as important as the five or the seven points. Faisal, you were talking about the teams at the bottom of the log there, the teams that are in danger at the moment, and and uh, we we are going to look at some of those matchups. Um, but teams that are in danger at the moment are teams like Belhar, St. George's, UWC, NTK, Villages. That, that, those are your bottom, your bottom component. Uh, Belhar obviously in real trouble here. They've only, only had, uh, they haven't won any games this year, so we, we, we know that they, they're going to be relegated. Uh, St. George's, UWC and NTK and Villages. It's going to be really between those, those three teams now to, to see what happens at the bottom three. Yeah, no, definitely, JP, as you said earlier on, everything is very tight. I think, you know, also not forgetting SK Warmers, they're also not out of it. Um, they're sitting on 22 points, but I mean, if you look at the teams in position 14, 13, and 12, one win, and automatically they're in par with SK it Warmers. Down. It drops down again. Yeah. So, or the other way around. Could or the off. other way around. Yeah. I think <laughs> really the only team that's probably really out of it is probably, you know, Belhar. Yeah. That's a bit unfortunate, but, um, you know, teams 14 all the way up until probably teams... 10, no, 11, 12, you know, everybody um, is basically in there. And then, of course, I mean, just we were going to plan to talk about this later in the show, but just give us a quick uh, snapshot. Um, the bottom two teams in divisions, uh, Super League A, B, and C, are automatically relegated. And then you have a playoff between um, the teams that are third last on the bottom of the log. Yeah, so what happens is uh, from the playoffs, you will have the teams progressing to the semifinals. The winners of the semifinals obviously progress to the, uh, to the finals. And the losing teams in the semifinals, that's team three and four, uh, will basically play out to determine who is three and four. So team number three in the playoffs will basically play against team number 13. That's now for the top six. That's for the, in the top six, in the correct. Top six, yeah. Yeah. At the bottom of the log, though, um, we have uh, the bottom two. Yeah. Definite relegation. Definite relegation. And the third from the bottom. Number Explain 13. to us how, how that works. Yeah. The third from the bottom, team number 13. Yeah. Okay, so in, for instance, in Super League A, team number 13 will play against the, the, the winner 
of the semi-finals. Right. Okay. Not the winners, should I say the, the losing winner of the semi-finals. So the winner of the semi-finals will progress to the finals. Then you've got two teams left. Those two teams will play against each other to determine who's number three and who's number four. On the log. On the, on on the, the log. So after the playoffs. After the playoffs. After, right, after the playoffs. Okay. And yeah. team number three in Super League B will play against team number, uh, team number 13 in Super League so A. So this year we've got a slightly different format, having the semi-finals, the finals and so forth. Um, but it comes down to the same thing as it was last year. After all the games are finished, you'll actually have a third team position. Yeah, I think what's great about this year is that you play until the end, down yeah. to the wire. There's no sort of set after the first round, you know, the conservative after the first round, this is the log, this is where you finish. You basically have a final at Newlands where every game is important. So not only your winner of the Super League A, B and C, but also to determine who's the uh, team that's going to be playing off against team number 13 for promotion or relegation. And that. I think what's great about it is that on the day, we're hoping the support uh, you know, we'll be there backing behind the teams in it. All right, folks, uh, we're going to take an ad break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to take a look at the uh, m match between um, uh, Belha and UWC. Um, of course, we know that uh, things, as Faisal said, is absolutely down to the wire. And this is a very important game. Uh, but this game was then for, for both those teams to try and avoid that relegation zone. Um, but big thanks, to, of course, to Springbok Atlas. They're on board with Cape Rugby TV now. If you're a team that is traveling away and you need bus transport, and it doesn't matter where you are, then Springbok Atlas is the transport solution for you. They've got safe, reliable transportation. They've got different sized buses from seven seaters all the way up to 60 seaters. They operate all over across South Africa. And the, the nice thing about this is that they are um, negotiable. So you can get all of Rashad Luki on 021-506-2572. Or you can email him on rashad.lucky at springbokatlas.co.za. So as I mentioned, the fantastic thing about Springbok Atlas is if you think you've got a price now with a bus company, call Springbok Atlas and let Rashad give you a better rate. Let him give you a, a transport solution for you. So give Rashad Lucky from Springbok Atlas a call there on 506-2572. We'll be back after the break. We'll take a look at the uh, match highlights between Belha and uh, UWC. All right, folks, welcome back. It's Cape Rugby TV. Uh, let's get straight into it now. Um, let's take a look at the ma match uh, highlights between Belha and uh, UWC. Right, folks, welcome back then. Uh, Bella UWC, a win then for UWC, 34 points to 7 um, over SK, uh, uh, sorry, not over SK, Warmers, over Bella. Um, these were absolute vital points, folks, um, for, for the likes of UWC and St. George's and NTK. It, it, it really is down to the wire now. Um, uh, Faisal, just talking about the matchups then again there, if we, if we take a look at the uh, UWC, um, uh, matchup, so it's critical that they that they get these points. But UWC need to make sure that they get all the points over the next couple of games. Yeah, I know definitely, JP. If you look at the fixtures that they've got, it's quite tough games. I mean, they've got Hamilton's, um, Falls Bay, Brackenfeld, and the last game would be obviously against NTK. So I think the win against Bella is crucial. Um, I think one of the wouldn't say challenges or downfall for the Super League A was that Bella couldn't 
at least get one win, which would have disrupted that whole sort of uh, the log positionings yeah. and that thing. Everybody's picked up points against them. So, you know, that's for me is a bit of, uh, it's a bit sad. Um, but I think, you know, UWC did uh, good great by winning that game. But now the last four games is going to be crucial and, 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 and key, I would say. Right, so let's quickly take a look at tonight's fixtures, folks. And you'll see you know, it's universities are all playing tonight. UWC are up against Hamilton's. Stellenbosch up against St. George's, Vicks against Villages, UCT and Belha. Um, Faisal, U UWC are going to have a hard game against Hamilton's. St. George's is going to have a very tough game against uh, uh, Stellenbosch. Villages and Vicks could go 50-50. And UCT and Belha, well, if Belha turn it on, um, <laughs> and let's hope they do for their sake and put a win on the board, um, that could also disrupt things. Uh, although... It's a little bit late in terms of points-wise for Bella. But looking at those top three teams, UWC, Hamilton's, um, St. George's, uh, uh, Stellenbosch. And then, as I said, the 50-50 one there, that could go any way. That could make a difference to the top six, Villages and, and, and Vicks. Yeah, no, definitely. I think Villages and Vicks um, could go either way. I think also UWC could be a bit tight at home. And at the, you know, I always say uh, one of the great things is the home ground advantage. Um, we saw what happened to Hamilton's against SK, SK Warmers. Warmers. Yeah. Um, no one expected that. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, to, tonight it's, gonna, it's not, it's not going to be that easy. Um, St. George's, Stellenbosch at Craven Stadium, it's going to be tough. Um, Stellenbosch, Marty's at home, they're always difficult. And obviously, Belhar UCT is also, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be really tough. Um, I think, you know, for Belhar, I think we want, they will probably want to wrap up the season and start preparing and planning for next year. Well, um, wrap, uh, you know, it's, Jerome, just talking, we've spoken often about, do you want to be a, a, in, in a higher league but somewhere at the bottom? Or do you want to be the champion in the lower league? And for, for 2019, I think Belha is going to have a fantastic season. They're going to come into Super League B and they're going to have all the experience of long-term Super League A and they're going to have a great league much like we've seen the likes of St. George's and Kalesjava and the top teams, Paul, really enjoy being the champions. Belha is going to be a real contender for 2019 and potentially come straight back to Super League A in, in, in 2020. Yeah, they, they, they can. And um, unfortunately, Saturday, I was, I was at that game. Um, they were not bad. They played some, some, some good rugby at stages. Unfortunately, they can't get their points. But uh, um, yeah, they need to bolt again and, and, and it looks like they're going to Super B and um, they will be a force uh, in, in, in Super B. Um, so I think they, you need to start somewhere. So they need to prepare for next year and, 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 and take it from there. But Jerome, we're going to stay with you. We've got a technical review that we want you to take a look at. And in this case specifically, it's a line out between um, Bellar and UWC. And this is, quite often, this is for the coaches out there and the moms and dads who, uh, who want to try and understand a little bit more about the technical side. Let's take a look at this. What, what went wrong there? I would say, uh, first of all, from a attacking uh, point of view, uh, UWC, they set the mall, they set it very high. And they could have, uh, from the start, uh, they could have start mauling lower and immediately as they come down, sort of move the thing. But they came down, stop, and that's where, uh, from the defensive side, where, where Bellar just put their weight there. But if they had the right technique, because if you see, uh, if you see six guys heads up and stopping a mall, you're already in trouble. Right. The only guys that you want to see outside the mall is the in front in the trams which you call is the number nine and the number two at the back if okay. there's a peel off in front or a peel off in back nines will stop that and uh, back the number two will stop that from a de defensive point of view but uh, Bella was too upright heads out so uh, from a coaching point of view you need to stick your head in everybody who's involved to try to stop them all put their heads up so let's just pause you there let's <coughs> take a look at the clip again and we're going to try and pause the clip at the time that the mall starts so there's the line out now uh, UWC takes the line, the mall starts, and um, Jerome, I think that's the part that you're talking about it's, where there's yeah. not enough yeah. uh, Belha players um, sticking their head in to try and stop that mall. Yeah, you can see all of them are, are, are upright. Uh, the guy that defended the back there is still out and there. You can see number nine still here. But the guys, the, 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 the rest of the forwards need to stick their so head So you need in, to get lower down. Get lower. Right, okay. And it was a front, sort of a front mall. It's the easiest, easiest one to defend. They should have get that thing into the five. As soon as that uh, mall is in the five, the line out is sort of over. Then they could have do everything uh, to stop that thing. All right. We're going to have to obviously take a, a, a lot 
you're talking about a lot of terminology about it, the heads in and the ball on the five. We're going to need a lot more coaching from you in terms of the, the technical side of things. So looking forward to that. Right, folks, MCAM 24-hour pharmacy, of course, on board with Cape Rugby TV. Um, if you drive down the N1, you'll see MCAM uh, if you're going out of town. MCAM is on your right-hand side. Uh, just off Durban Road and if you're coming into town it's on your left hand side obviously I went down there last week and it is looking fantastic there's a massive new MCAM sign outside on Durban Road popped in there um, had a nice meal up at the um, uh, at the cafeteria upstairs at MCAM and then went around to the supplement section and got myself some Evox products and uh, what a fantastic place uh, MCAM 24-hour pharmacy, um, Joel Lee and Mr. Malach there with the newly revamped MCAM, free parking as well. So pop around to MCAM 24-hour pharmacy, I think it's the only pharmacy in Cape Town that is open 24 hours a day. Uh, right folks, we're going to take an ad break, when we come back from the break we'll start taking a look at uh, Super League B. You want to see down to the wire? Super League B is the, the league for you. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the fixtures coming up this Saturday, then in a Super League A. UWC up against False Bay, Durbanville in against SK, Warmers, Hamilton's and Fix, NTK and Villages, Stellenbosch take on Di Tigerberg and Union Mill up against Brackenfell, while St. George's take on UCT. Quickly take a look at the matchups then. NTK up against Villagers. Um, we spoke about that little sort of mid-table, Faisal. Um, teams that are potentially going to go up and down. Here you see it now. NTK up against Villagers. Jerome Faisal. Uh, NTK is sitting on an 18% success rate at the moment. They are log position 12. Villagers are log position 11. They're sitting on a 27% win ratio at the moment. The other big game, of course, that's going to be coming up this weekend is Union Mill against Brackenfell. Um, now, they're sitting in uh, position log five and eight. Both those teams, as Faisal was saying earlier, can go up, can go down. Uh, mm -hmm. Union Mill is sitting on a 64% win rate at the moment. Brackenfell on 55% win rate at the moment. The thing, though, for Brackenfell is that they have got a slight advantage with less points against them, um, but they're scoring less points on average per game. If we look at that, Faisal, um, Brackenfell are going to have to make sure that their defensive side is upped against uh, Brackenfell. Um, but they do have less points against them than, than, than Union Mill. Yeah, I think if you look at Brackenfell, Brackenfell for me this year was a team where results could go either way. You know, a win or a loss in that there. So they were the team, I think, that... You know, they leveled out the, the sort of the Super League in that day. And I think this weekend, the game against the Unimil and Brackenfell is going to be even tight. Um, I think Unimil have to win the game. Brackenfell, win, a win year will basically secure them, move them up a couple of spaces on the logs. Yeah. So it's a very tight game. Um, I think, you know, it's going to go down to the wire in that day this weekend again. Jerome, just from a technical perspective, with uh, Unimil having scored more points, or at least having had had more points scored against them than uh, uh, Brackenfell this year and but on the other hand they've scored more points on average for the total season um, as I was saying to Faisal the the defensive side of uh, of Union Mill uh, even though they've got more points uh, this season yeah. they have had more points scored against them yeah. um, they are however scoring on average more points per game yeah it is uh, so 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 just um, if I was Brackenfell I would I would play uh, Unimil in the right uh, the half of the field, so I won't play a lot of rugby in, in, in my own half because Unimil, once they're in the 20, in your 22, you can, you can be sure they will score tries because they've got an experience uh, backline yeah. with Monty de Mont. Uh, they've got two good centers, so I will play them in the right, I will play them in their 22 and keep them away from my try. So does that mean you need to play more of a kicking game? Exactly. So it's a kicking game. All right, so Union Mill, the advice for you, for, for Jerome, not that he's choosing favours, uh, sides, is uh, more of a kicking game. So Brackenfell, the advice then for you is look out for Union Mill's kicking game. I suppose that's, uh, that calls it equal. <laughs> All right, folks, let's take a look at the results in um, Super League B. Uh, Vineyard's going down to Collegians, 31 points to 29. Um, and then Hamlets went down to Belleville, 25-20. Hands and Arts went down to Heldenburg, 22-28. Uh, Cryfontaine with a win over Peniel Villages, 33-26. Paul with a big win over All Saints, 66-14. Kelsman and Primrose, 26-all. And Young Peoples, 
33-29 over Rangers. Okay, so our features match, folks, by the way, is going to be hands and hearts up against Haldeberg. You're going to see that in a, in a second or so. Um, but before we do that, let's take a look at the logs. Um, important to understand what's happening in the logs in Super League B. We've got Paul sitting at the top at the moment, uh, followed by Haldeberg, then Franschuk and Belleville and Kalesrava and Primrose, young peoples. We're talking here about, from pretty much position number 9 and 10, um, Faisal, with the fact that uh, even down to position number 11, uh, with the fact that the teams still have four up to up to four games in hand for some of the teams, we would probably look at the the team's log positions from number one all the way through to number ten, uh, being collegians or even uh, collegians in position number eleven, who could make it into the top six. Yeah, no, JP, if you look at it, I think uh, Super League B is one uh, a, a, a league where it's undecided. One of the telling factors, if you look at it, is that a lot of them do not have the same amount of games played. Yeah. If you look at the top four position, you have you have Paul, you have Helderberg in position one and two, so respectively, but then you've got Franzuk and Balville, who also are on 37, but they've played 10 matches. So they've still got a game in hand, which would possibly take them, if they win those games, right up to number position one and two as well. So, I mean, Super League B, all the way, like you said, right down to a position number 10, 11 is very tight in that there. The bottom six positions is also tight. Yeah. I think one of, the, one of the key factors would be the remaining games, who the remaining games are. So yeah. basically, I think a lot of the teams are starting to cancel themselves out where you're having position one and two or one and three playing against each other. So I think the person that drew the log knows what he's doing with those exciting <laughs> games. Because <laughs> it's down to the tees with the last couple of games and that last couple of weeks. Right, folks, if you want to see the logs and the results and the fixtures, you can, of course, download the Cape Rugby TV mobile app. It's a fantastic little app. And uh, in, in, in addition to the logs, results, and the fixtures, if you want to see any of your team's full season, then uh, you, can, you can go onto the app and do the full season search. And you understand then which teams are playing home and away um, and which teams are remaining, as, as Faisal was saying. Um, Jerome, Kales River Primrose, uh, I think you called it that it was going to be a draw. Yeah, because I, uh, both the coaches, uh, Rito and um, Aestas from Kales River, it's forward coaches. Yeah. And it was typical weather for forward play. And uh, that's why I say with well, that two guys uh, know what they do up front. So I called it. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I don't think it's a result that they want, but... Um, it, it was a tough game. But one of the big games this weekend is of Kales River are up against Cryfontaine. And if we look at the, the stats here now, it's, these are important games, folks, because Kales River will want to make sure that they get into the, that they stay in the top six. Uh, well, they've got enough points at the moment to, to pretty much ensure that they stay in the top six. But if you're looking at these stats here, of course, for Cryfontaine, it's just as an important game to make sure that they try and get some points to stay out of the bottom three. So Kales River at the moment, yeah, sitting here with a 64% uh, win rate. Cryfontein on a 20% win, a 20% win rate, but this is definitely a case of the two teams are in a um, up, down, uh, higher part of the log, bottom part of the log. If we look at this, Jerome, um, will Cryfontein get any points out of this out of this match? Um, as you say, JP, I think they would they would want to try and play to get out of that bottom the bottom tree. So uh, um, they will, and it was a good win for them uh, against uh, uh, Pinal Villages the, the weekend. Yeah. So if they can keep that momentum, they just need to get points. But on the other side is uh, Kales River. Uh, they're also a quality side, so they will, they will probably target uh, Cryfontaine to get points to get, to get higher up. Um, Faisal, just bringing it back to you now. Um, they're playing against Cryfontaine this weekend. Lower team in the log. Kales River will want to take these points. But then their next game is um, away against Hamlets, and that is a dangerous game. We've seen Hamlets beat Kells River before. Kells River's beaten Hamlets. It goes 50-50. Hamlets away in Atlantis. Tough game. Home ground advantage yeah. again, JP. I think uh, Ham ha Hamlets at home is always difficult in that there. And, I mean, we've seen it. Um, Kells River, a, it's a very good side. Um, there's some, like you said, some results that didn't go their way in that there. But I think... You know, uh, they're going to need those points um, if they want to be, you know, compete with the teams on top. It's very tight. I think what's great about, again, if you look at the competition, is that there is no um, easy games. And come the weekend, you've got to put out a stronger team. There's yeah. no resting. There's no planning and preparation for next year. Giving the youngsters a chance, you play until the end. Well, one of the, one of the reasons why I'm asking you this is because... Um, 
I know people are wondering why, why are we looking at the top six? Why is the top six so important? Especially maybe the top first, second, third and fourth position top six. But the fact is, which we haven't touched on, is that position one and two is guaranteed a semi-final position. Correct. So one and two is automatically in the semi-finals and then you have three, four, five and six competing now in the quarterfinals yeah. to, de to decide who the winners will play in the semi-finals. So let's go back to the log. Let's take a quick look at the log here again and you'll see that folks on the log, what's important here, chasing for that one and two position is that Franchuk, Belleville, Kales River are all sitting on exactly 37 points and any points movement there could get them into from those three teams could get them into a position where they move uh, and challenge Paul and Helderberg. So very important games this that we could see any of these teams on the weekend make the move because Kales River's last game of the season is in fact against Belleville. Um, Helderberg, Paul have had their easy games, tough games, but they're not out of the woods in terms of the first and second positions. Yeah, no, definitely. I think one key factor there is that Franjuk and Belleville have got 10 games. They've still got two uh, games in hand. Yeah. So Paul and Helderberg, they've got to win the remaining games in that yeah. there. So there's no you know, easy automatic one and two, three, four. I would even go as far as to say, if you look at, uh, you know, Kells River and these other teams, one win automatically means you jump you, to the top. You could be in the mix. Yeah. Of course, the games in hand, like you say, is a very important factor. Jer Jerome, you're looking at this. You're looking at this log position here like it's a like it's a puzzle. Yeah, I just think a, a team like Alderberg must be very careful. Because if you look at that 37 and that three, yeah. uh, Franz Hoek, Piavel and Kales River, which are quality sides, so I think uh, Alderberg must really be on the lookout. Well, Helderberg's next three <coughs> games are um, uh, on, on our mobile app here. The next three games is home to young peoples, as we saw. Uh, we'll look, take a look at the fixtures coming up now. Then they're away to Cryfontaine, and they've got Franz Hook at home. So, Helderberg uh, are, are going to be playing against uh, young peoples, which um, is, a, is a potentially a dangerous outfit. Yeah. Uh, young peoples, of course, at the moment sitting at seven on the log. Then they've got Cryfontaine away, and Cryfontaine's still a little below on the log, but then they've got Franz Hook. So for Helderberg, it's still very close. In fact, we, we could probably take a look at Paul as well. Um, we'll take a look at Paul in a sec. Let's take a look at the fixtures now. We'll bring the fixtures up on the, on, on the board for you while we bring up the Paul um, season. Of course, Paul's sitting at the, moment, at the moment at number one on the log, but it's Helderberg and Young Peoples, All Saints and, and Hamlets. This weekend, Belleville and Vineyards. Collegians, Hands and Hearts, Kells River and Cryfontaine, and then it's Peniel Villagers and Franchuk and Rangers and Primrose. But as I said, I would take a look at the uh, Paul season. Vineyards, uh, Paul's um, and next games are up against Vineyards, then it's Hands and Hearts and Collegians. Um, Paul are potentially in a slightly strong, stronger position uh, than, than Helderberg, but nevertheless, the teams like Belleville, Kells River, Primrose, and yeah. even Young Peoples to a certain degree, can still challenge for position uh, one and two if they were to get five points out of each game. Well, France should. Anyway, yeah. folks, Super League B, it's been a, it, it is a definitely a conversation that we can have for a very long time, but, but um, so many different permutations for us to, to look at there. Dulux Maitland is, of course, the number 30 Kuburg Road. If you want to get any of your paint supplies, then get down to Dulux Maitland. In fact, there's a bunch of club rugby lovers there as well. And um, you can. Uh, Go and ask them to, to spec your house for you or spec your construction space and they'll work out for you exactly how much space you need or how much paint you need for your space. They'll measure it, then they'll work out exactly what kind of paint you need and that means that the quantity of paint that you put into your house um, and the right type of paint um, means that you're going to save money because you're not going to have too much paint left over. You're going to have just exactly the right amount of paint to do your job exactly as needed. And the nice thing about Dulux Maitland is that they will also advise you on the best paint to use in your space so that you don't have to paint your house again in the next couple of days or in the next couple of years. It'll last a long time. Very important to make sure that your long-term investment on your properties work out in the right way. Folks, we're going to take an ad break. And when we come back from the break, um, we are going to take a look at the a match between uh, Hands and Hearts and Halderberg. Welcome back, everybody. It's Cape Rugby TV, and we talk about what's happened in the world of Western Province Club Rugby. Um, right, score energy drinks, of course, on board with Cape Rugby TV. I see Jerome is already uh, drinking his score energy drink. Um, I'm certainly thirsty, so I'm just, you're going to have to hold on. Oh, lovely. 
Scores on board with West Brom's Club Rugby and with Cape Rugby TV. Do yourself a favor, get yourself a can of score. Um, it's well worth a really nice uh, energy booster and it tastes absolutely fantastic. If you want to win yourself a case of score energy drinks, then all you need to do is uh, SMS the word score to 33090. Terms and conditions, of course, apply. 33090. Congratulations to last week's winner, Denise Michaels. Denise, you walk away with a case of score energy drinks. And someone from Cabra TV is going to be in touch with you shortly. So um, you can collect your case of score energy drinks. Folks, over the weekend, it was, of course, hands and hearts up against Helderberg. Uh, as we spoke about earlier, Helderberg is challenging in that um, top three, top four position at the moment. They're sitting at number two on the log. Hands and hearts themselves struggling a little bit. Our thoughts, of course, are with hands and hearts. But what a fantastic team. The Gies, so big at hands and hearts. The community support, so big at hands and hearts. <coughs> And um, definitely still trying to make sure that they stay out of the bottom three. Let's take a look at the highlights now in the match between Hanson Arts and Elderberg. So the final result there for Helderberg, 22-8 over Hands on Hearts. Um, Hearts, of course, uh, had a bit of a rough day. We know that uh, they were there. Many of the fans um, and players were there, of course, uh, in memory of um, Nicholas Lippi Pedro, who passed away, sadly, um, about uh, 10 days ago. And um, the whole community was there to support Hands on Hearts on the day. Let's speak now to the captains and uh, coaches of uh, Hands and Hearts and um, we'll just find out what, what the guys have to say and uh, of course the uh, Hands and Hearts captain Bertram Erasmus. 
Ja, Renzel, je ziet, um, we gaan niet verschonings maken. Um, op het einde van die dag is um, Helderberg was honger, of hulle was meer honger als ons. Um, ja, en hulle het gegryp. En um, um, een harde week voor ons van voorbereiding, maar zoals ik zei, um, we gaan niet verschonings maken. Um, zoals allemaal weet van die, um, die, die, die um, sterfte van, van ons, ons coach um, Nicolas Pedro. So, ja, het is een beetje tough week geweest, maar zoals ik zei, Helderbuk was die hongerste op het op 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 einde van die dag. Want um, ik denk dat um, ons wel op het einde van die dag uh, wel ons zakken. So, ik denk dat zal redelijk uh, 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 twee, drie games is wat ons, wat ons, wat ons zal deertrek, definitief. Want zoals ik zei, ik ken die klap, ik weet um, ons kan fight. En als ons fight, dan fight ons tot, tot, tot die bitter einde. Uh, ik denk dat we niet bij goed naar ons bal gekeken hebben. Ballen naar het oosten, mooi naar gekeken. Um, onze ballen en die contact is verloren, onze continuïteit was hier al like, daar geweest. Als we uh, momentum gekregen het, dan het ons momentum verloren en onze ballen aan die oppositie oorgegeven. En dus we hebben vandaag voor ons oor aangezet. Hij heeft op ons fouten uh, gespeeld en hij heeft gezien via daarop en hij heeft ook uh, capitalized op. Ja, ja, kijk er eens wat ik voor je zo zeg. Um, na die reënseizoen kom je hierin nog altijd op. Ik denk dat die mannen. Ze hart het gaan leni, um, ons draag ons hart op ons liefs en ik denk die mannen gaan terugbouwen en hulle gaan wijs uh, voor die weeskaap dat ons is nog een fors moment gerekend te word. Um, ons wil baie graag in die Superliga beheer blij en ik denk die mannen hulle, hulle gaan uitdaal en wijs voor die volgende paar wedstrijden wat oor is. Right folks, so welcome back there. Under very difficult conditions, um, hands and hearts playing there. And as I mentioned earlier on, our thoughts, of course, still go to the um, family and friends of uh, Nicholas Lippi Pedro, who's close, close friends of all of us here at Cape Rugby TV. Um, but we know, as uh, Coach uh, Christopher Solomon said there, the rainbow always comes out at hands and hearts. So... Um, uh, players playing under very difficult conditions. Uh, but let's have a chat now to the um, uh, captain and coach of uh, Helderberg. Of course, captain there is Verena Williams and uh, coach Lynn Bierkes. For the first time, I can't say for the Himmels of Vader, thank you. It was a good day for rugby. It came to show a point in the first place. It's a shame to lose what they have from their coach. And we feel it together as a club and see how it is. Um, Jaldeberg, rugby club for them. But at the end of the day, it was not the chance to grip. And it was not the way to make it. The first half was a bit tough. And the second half, we had the wind gespeeld. And we had the wind to break. And it began to start to spiel. And at the end of the day, it was not the best team to win on the day. Yeah, we had it this week. Um, with the upstairs of the Afrika, it was going to be very emotional week for them. We had to focus on our focus and we had to try to do it good. Um, ik denk niet dat we het zo so goed van ons taak gekweet nie. Um, ook met baie beserings in die week gehad en die reen en die ouders wat griep het. Um, maar ons moest adapt so vinnig as moendlik. En ek weet, ons is altijd ons happy standing ground hier nie. Maar als het nie had gekom, eerst voor die win en dan gaat ons voor die bonus. En dit is wat ons kreeg als die vijf kon kry. Ja kijk, ons, <coughs> ons gesê, ons wil die topspot soveel as moendlik of so naast moendlik daarin uitkom. Um, ons het het vir ons een bykie moeiliker gemaakt so paar weke terug. Maar ons is nou op dreef. Um, ons wil definitief eerst of tweede eindig, um, dan zit je uit die kwart einde rond, maar als we de derde eindig gaan vatten, is wat ik kom. Right folks, sitting here and uh, it is of course a bitterly cold in the studio this, uh, this evening, but um, you know, I keep thinking to myself, well, how, JP, how can you complain about the cold? There are so many other people out there um, who are, don't, are not fortunate enough to to be indoors, so uh, thoughts just go out to the folks. Let's try and stay warm out there, folks. It's very, it is very difficult. All right, uh, Western Promise Rugby faithful, of course, um, are uh, there for you as the Western Promise Rugby Supporters Club. So the faithful are offering for you a, a thousand rand membership to join the Western Promise Rugby Supporters Club. You get a Stormers jersey, a brand new cap, 500 rand Adidas voucher, a membership card. These all get couriered to you, folks. An official certificate of membership, bonus gifts from the partners like Land Rover and Bright Rock, and of course that free trial gym access to Virgin Active, and then that faithful SIM card starter packet. I think that's worth 500 rand from Vodacom. And as I mentioned, all of that gets couriered to you. So for just a thousand rand, you get worth more than 3,000 rands worth of goodies in that packet. I think I'm going to be um, be getting one for myself because not only uh, do you get that membership. Pack, 
pack, but it also gives you VIP bonus um, opportunities and purchase extra purchase discounts um, on various websites. We're taking an ad break. When we come back from the break, we are going to uh, take a look at the top nine. City League, uh, Southern League, and Northern League has now been determined. Faisal Felton is here to tell us more about that, and we'll have a discussion on the draw that is coming up next week, Monday, as well as how this is going to affect 2019. Back in a sec. One of our greatest assets are our fans, the faithful. And we really wanted to create something unique, something world-class. A supporter club that engaged and interacted with all our fans, not only within the Western Cape, but regionally, nationally, and in fact internationally. We have the best fans in the world. And we believe we put together the most amazing, unique, and innovative supporter program. And we call on you to stand together with us. Are you one of the faithful? Welcome back, everybody. Cape Rugby TV on board with uh, us, of course, um, Dulux Maitland, MCAM 24-Hour Pharmacy, uh, Springbok Atlas, um, and, of course, Score Energy Drinks. I've got my score here to keep me warm tonight. Um, right, I'm going to have, have a sip of that in a second. Let's quickly take a look at the results in the City League, uh, the Northern League and the Southern League. And there you see Police with a win over Hamadiers. It was a win for progress over CPUT Gardens. Cities and Perseverance, uh, Temperance Cities beating Perseus there, 38-28. Uh, Kelly's with a uh, win over Watsonia. And then 43-5, a win for um, Silver Tree over Young Ideas. In the Southern League, Retreat with a win over Titans. Lagunia, 27-10 over Rocklands. Silverleaf went down to Nordlickers and Thistles. Um, uh, with a, a loss against a morning star. So those are, of course, the uh, Southern League, uh, City and Northern League. Let's quickly take a look at the results in the Northern League. Um, it was a, uh, a win for Windmill United, 14-12, and then Stelcor beating Strand Pioneers, 113-0. to Not sure what happened there, but uh, big results there. Right, folks, so now we understand what the results are from the uh, City and Northern and Southern Leagues. Let's take a look at the th top three in each of the uh, log that's gone through. So City League, we see Masi Pumulele, Silver Tree, and Police going through. In the Southern League, it's Morningstar, Lagunia, and Retreat. And then in the Northern League, Blue Stars, Wraithby, and Fundestel. Faisal, the ball is in your court now. Um, there are still a handful of games left in those divisions, but the top three in each of the City, Southern and Northern Leagues can't be affected anymore. No, yeah, definitely. Um, this, there is a last game this weekend, but uh, as you said, um, the pretty much one, two and three has been decided. Yeah. So now, for the folks that have just tuned in and have just become club rugby fans as of today, uh, essentially what's happened here is you have your three divisions, the City League, the Southern League, the Northern League, and it's the top three in each league that now compete against each other in, in the top nine. Yeah, so what happens now, JP, on Monday night we have a draw, um, next week Monday, and basically that will be to determine your home ground advantage. So the three teams in each division, your Northern, Southern, and your City League, will basically make up the new sort of promotion league. Um, Jerome, the, this is going to be tight. We've been looking at this over the last couple of weeks, and we, we see now, let's just go back to this. I mean, teams like Morningstar, they've had a fantastic season um, so far. Masi Pumulele, other than their match against Western Zebras, they were unbeaten this year. Blue Stars, Wraithby, and Funestel, they played musical chairs over the last two, three months. It was the one day it was the one was up the other one was there. it was constant there we're going to see some monster games play out here it's going to be almost unpredictable um this is what we want to see in club rugby yeah uh, but any of the top three you can see as you say it changed uh, Masi uh, lost the game uh, we, we were surprised all that they lost the, that game so any any of the top three teams can can uh, sort of um beat any team yeah Faisal yeah. let's just talk about the actual matchups now um, <coughs> how does it work uh, in terms of the home and away and you have a draw next week that determines now um, who plays who yeah so what happens now is the three divisions come together to form one as I said earlier which is now called so the promotion league um, so the matchups or the home ground advantage is determined by a draw so basically what happens on Monday Teams will come out and we draw to determine which games will be at home. We know the nine teams that are going to be in the promotion league. The only thing that we're uncertain about is which games will be at home. So the teams will play uh, eight matches in total and at the... Yeah. I must say, looking at 2018 so far, um, 
and uh, if we read all the articles and we look at the monthly, the weekly matchups, I must say this has been probably the closest uh, season that we've had in, in a number of years. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the major challenges that we've, no one is talking about or that we've overcome is obviously the drought and that, which I think has played also a major, has made an impact on the results and the logs and that. There. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting in 2019 19 to see how the teams fare. If you look at the logs results, I think, you know, there's always a bit of uncertainty or a bit of, uh, you know, people are used to the norm. Um, I think the, the change in the format will definitely create a lot more excitement in that there. Jerome, uh, just a final question. Um, any thoughts on the Springboks up against uh, Argentina? Yeah, we no, could have done better. A, yeah, that was a big surprise. And, uh, and it's just strange how our coaching is, JP. If you, you, you hear in the media and you look at Supersport, how all of a sudden the Springboks get criticized and, and, and Rossi is not the best coach in the world anymore. So that's unfortunately how coaching goes. Yeah, it's a uh, tough luck, hard <coughs> luck, but you know, I think we're still hanging on to the history of the Springboks and being uh, World Cup winners and so on. And maybe the playing fields are a little bit even now and we shouldn't be expecting uh, things to be as easy as they were in the past. Yeah, I think the thing that, that, that that's worrying for them now, because they already dropped on, the, on world rankings and uh, um, uh, Australia is going to be tough, New Zealand is going to be tough. So they might end up dropping three more spots in the, in, in the World Cup year. You don't want that. Look, I've never been um, surprised when, uh, on the odd occasion, well, the, the, you know, New Zealand, Australian can be beaten. But the reality is that if you look at how New Zealand beat Australia on Saturday, uh, they are not likely to lose. Yeah, and, and, and if you look at how Australia play, then... Um, they're not likely I, to lose also. They're not also <laughs> likely to lose because the, the halftime score yeah. is always like quite close. We in New Zealand always score just before halftime. Yeah. But uh, Australia playing great rugby. Yeah. Uh, Jerome, thanks for joining us on Cape Rugby. Hopefully we'll see you again next week. Yeah, thanks. We'll be back next week. Yeah. Uh, Faisal, nice to have you back here. Thanks, James. Good being um, back. Yeah, no, it's always good to catch up with things from the province side. Uh, of course, you've got the draw next week, and uh, we know mm. that there's a lot of ha things happening with kiddies rugby, women's rugby, uh, the sevens tournament coming yeah. up, so there's still a lot of talking to do. Yeah, definitely. Lots, lots still happening. The season is not over. might be over for some clubs, but I think uh, it's, still, it's still a long way to go. Fantastic. Right, folks, that's a wrap from us here at Cape Rugby TV. Uh, don't forget to find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you again. Next week, same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.